What's going on? Welcome on in to today's trade recap. Lots to discuss. Um, the week is over, but we finished with a, call it a break-even day, uh, down $19.66. Um, some open positions, if I'm looking really quick, I believe are up. Um, not a ton. We have an open position at $91 in the green and an open position at $17 in the green. Um, that were opened today, or one of them was open today, one was closed, then reopened today. I don't know, whatever. We'll cover it all here in this video. Um, there is an adjustment to be made for yesterday. Go back. Yesterday was a green day, if you recall. It actually was not. We had closed and we were stopped out on some swing positions. So we ended up red. Uh, shortly after I made that video, the S&P, if I were to pull up SPY, the S&P, I believe, just dropped pretty hard after some bond auction news and whatnot. So that was the deal there. Now, it's been a choppy week, so we'll start with the S&P and we'll kind of look at it there. Uh, to start off, earlier this week, I had a long on the S&P that I played and it was really on the four hour break to the upside. So I was looking at a four hour chart. I was not looking at a five minute chart. The majority of the trades, well, a bunch of, there's a couple five minuters over this week, but there's a lot of 30 minute and up timeframes. So I play the break here on the S&P over this little four hour flag. This is just like an error on the chart, but this is all we had. It was like a four hour flag. She's a four hour flag. The upside got in here. That got stopped out yesterday's or yesterday's video I filmed earlier in the day. Uh, that then came down hard uh, and I got stopped out. And then I got in short because I saw higher volume on the move down and a false break, right? It tried to break out, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. Okay, false break, looking to target the gap fills to the downside, essentially the inverse of my breakout strategy, which I've been playing here and there. That got stopped out today. So just chop city, chop city, chop city, chop city, uh, essentially. So if we go into today, this S&P essentially is the same position. Um, so add these two numbers up. So it's 160, I don't know, whatever the number is, uh, and change. So we lose the on that. I close out of my Adobe swing temporarily. Uh, and I, I lost five there, but I believe I made 22. So I think I netted like $15 green. So a break even swing on Adobe. Then I played a Russell short, which was actually really nice. Uh, so the, if I go to US 2000, uh, it, it, it lost, but it, the setup was great. So I, I don't regret this trade at all. Uh, if you go to the four hour chart, I mean, it looked pretty good to me. Pretty good to me. So check out volume, right? Volume's been kind of chilling, not crazy. Volume gets heavier on the big move down. Okay, cool. What are we going to do? Are we going to break down? Well, I draw a level right here. I see a bull. I see a bear flag. Boom, 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 boom. Break it. And then immediately pop back up, got stopped out. So lost on that one. Got in on the breakdown little wick right there, came right back. That's going to happen. It's part of the game. It's going to happen. The reason why we do this or why I trade the way I, uh, with the direction is because it happens less when you're going with the direction. So that was the US 2000, essentially the Russell, 64 bucks. So keeping the losses tight. Nothing, these aren't massive losses. I'm, you know, I'm, it is what it is. AMD, this is one trade. It counts it as two, but this ends up netting over $200. So 92 plus 121. So a bunch of small losses. Yes, am I getting chopped around? Yeah. And then we have the AMD. So we essentially go break even. Essentially, I said that on the day. Uh, AMD, we had like one winner, two losers on day trades. Well, not even, no, not day trades. The, the S&P was a swing. So we only had one day trade. So on the, on the one day, on the day trade side of things today, made 210-ish. Lost 64, so whatever that nets out to be, 150 green. That's pretty good, dude. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining with that. I'm gonna take that. So we just haven't been getting uh, any swings 
or the bigger picture charts have not been working. So AMD quickly here, I was on the, I was on the 30 minute chart. That's where I identified this. We had these two highs right here, staying strong, staying above the VWAP. I enter on the break right here. Stop losses under breaking candle low right here. Got close on that little wick, got about 15 cents away. Uh, then a nice push and that was the move. We locked, we scaled out along the way. That was the move. The reason why it was two trades was because um, I bought 100 twice. So I want to get 200, a 200 share position with the first buy. I couldn't, or I didn't buy 200, I bought 100. So I bought a second, literally two seconds after that. So that was that. Um, the only open positions now are Meta and Adobe. So let's pull up the charts. What are we thinking about these bad boys? Uh, I, I like them. Um, these are swing positions and they have stops that are not in danger, unless there's some crazy news, I guess, on them. These are not in danger of, you know, overnight getting killed, even going into CPI next week. They're not in danger of that. Uh, I'm just playing the charts as I see them. I'm not going to worry about outside of the individual stock having earnings, which they both have already gotten past earnings. Uh, I'm, I'm fine playing the charts as I see them. So Meta, this one you could say could be a little early, but essentially I'm playing Meta as a break to the upside of consolidation. Um, as if you look at the both of these charts, I'm on the weekly time frame. Sorry, I'm going to move to the weekly here. We are on the verge of a break to the upside. My stop loss, the reason why I like the Meta one though a lot is because if you look at this has been a big move followed by a consolidation phase and big lower wick right here got bought right back up that same week. My stop loss is under 296, so it's right here. So it's not that insane. You know, I'm risking like 20, 30 bucks. Um, so I just, I size accordingly. These are not, these position sizes are not what I would date. I would date trade with a lot more size because I'm looking for a smaller move, smaller risk, smaller reward net. This is looking for a swing. So we're looking bigger picture here on Meta. And if you do the math uh, uh, on Meta, and, and if you do the math on where the risk reward profile has to be, a two to one risk reward gets you to a new all time high. That's a big move. I don't know about that. But a one to one risk reward uh, would be about, or a 1.25, I should say, is about 365. That would be kind of like my first, not kind of, that's my first target, which puts you like right into here. So that's what I'm looking for on Meta. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But that's the plan on that. And then I scale out from there. Uh, ADBE is Adobe. I am looking for a 610 plus to start taking profits on this. It currently trades at 597. Here is the weekly chart. Very, not, not, not the same, but kind of a similar look to, to Meta. Big move, consolidated for months, literally months, uh, and then now just broke its consolidation and closed exceptionally strong this week. I love that look. Just shy of 600 bucks. Might see some resistance there at $600, but I'm looking for moves 610 to 620 for first take profits. Stop loss is under breaking candle low, which happens to be 557 and change on that. A little bit different on Meta, just the way I'm looking at that chart, that invalidation point to me makes more sense a little bit lower. But if Meta does break through a bit more, you know, the breaking candle low will, will likely be the same approach. That's generally what I put my stop losses on, breaking candle low. Uh, worst case scenario, it's bottom of consolidation. Like that's an absolute invalidation. Only problem is that many times, you know, bottom of consolidation, the consolidation phase could be pretty big. And that would mean that I need Adobe to go to like $700 for that to be a good risk reward trade, which is a big move. It could do it. It could, could do it, but that's a big move. Maybe I'm, I'm not, ex I, I like to take profits a little bit sooner than that. So I want to make sure my risk reward makes sense. So that's that. I'm out of any other, other, other swings. He's the only two swings, swings I got. Uh, let's go to search trader. Let's refresh this to make sure it's up to date. Uh, we are at 15% growth target. So we didn't have a great day. Uh, if you will, if you go back in time, I guess, you know, technically today's balance is up 88 bucks from where it was end of day yesterday because we had realized the losses on the swings and we had realized the loss, yeah, the S&P swing and whatnot. Then today we didn't start off great, but we did come back with the AMD trade and then now the two swings that I entered 
they are up. So my open positions are up a bit better. Uh, and, you know, so that's why we're up today. But fell back a bit. I, I have to say that I think the past week and a half, well, past week is when I've been, been a week and a half ago, I wasn't really trading. Um, it's been very choppy. I've been chopping it up a lot. So I'm fairly frustrated, I guess you could say, but at the same time, we've minimized the damage. As in our losses are nice and small. Our winners have been pretty, pretty big. If we keep this up during times of crappy conditions in the market for my strategy, again, it's gonna be everyone's strategy there. During times of crappy conditions in the market, we handle ourselves, handle business, don't lose too much, keep the gains, keep the majority of your gains. And when times are good, push that pedal and make a move. So that's what we're looking at on the, the um, funded account. Sizing may inch up when I, you know, when when I see fit, but not really in a rush. I feel like my sizing is fine, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So that is today's trade recap. Going back in here to take a look at the past or the month. On the month, we're down three hundred bucks. Last month we were up, I think thirteen or thirteen hundred or something like that. I think was last month, but we're down three hundred so far this month. We are operating with not the best win rates. Not the best average win loss, but you know, we'll see how things play out the rest of the month. Thanks so much for watching. I'll leave any links, resources down below to anything that I use. TradeZell attracts all my trades. Surge Trader for the, the prop firm. Don't use them if you don't want them, but I'll leave links down below. Also, Trading View on the 20th. So 10 days from now, the 20th of November, I believe, is their Black Friday. That's the beginning of their Black Friday sale. If you have been looking to upgrade your Trading View plan, that is the time to do it. I'll leave a link to that down below. You don't have to use it, but TradingView has incredible, incredible deals if you are looking to upgrade your TradingView plan or go from a free to a paid plan. Black Friday is the time to do it. So stay tuned. That's coming soon. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.